morning. This is the third part of a three-part series that I'm doing, although we've had some gaps in it, uh, from our Summer Prosperity Increased Income Prosperity Treatment, which says, I know that true prosperity includes perfect health, perfect wealth, and perfect happiness. So we started off with perfect health in the first one and talked about how, our, how when we start opening up our awareness to this idea that we are free to do what we want to do and go where we want to go and have the life that we want to have, that it does something to our bodies. Not only our physical body, but the body of our affairs. It frees up energy. And that when we're all stuck in life, and helpless and hopeless, our bodies get stuck. And it gets hopeless and helpless. And so we manifest that in a physical level. And when we open up to this idea that says our life can be what we want it to be, maybe we're going to have to do some changes, maybe we'll have to put some work in it and do some energy around changing some beliefs and behaviors, our body gets healthier. And the body of our affairs get healthier. So we talked about perfect health, and then we spoke about perfect wealth. And perfect wealth includes, but is not limited to, money. Perfect wealth includes money, but we have all kinds of wealth that goes beyond money. We have a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of support, a wealth of experience. We have the wealth of the people around us that love us, that we can call on. I use the example of the, uh, the teen group getting evacuated because of the fire and how they went to the Palm Desert Center for Spiritual Living and how all the people just rallied inside of hours. They had food, they had water, they had places for the kids to sleep. That was a demonstration of wealth that didn't really have anything to do with money. So we learned in the Summer Prosperity class, if you have not come yet, you may want to come tomorrow night. It's going to be great. But we learned how to grab money right out of thin air. Because money is a necessary tool for living in our culture. And too many people on the spiritual path hide behind the idea that they don't have any money so that they don't really have to do and be who they've come here to be. So we learned how to create money, but we also talked about the idea of wealth. And now we're moving into perfect happiness, which I love this topic because I am the happiness queen. I am the happiness queen because I know that we can create happiness any moment that we want because happiness is not about something outside of us. It's always within. And when we look at happiness as I will be happy as soon as that person starts acting the way that I think they should act. We're screwed. <laughs> when we can be so spiritually evolved as to say I am a happy person no matter what that person does then we get to experience happiness. When we say, I will be happy as long as I have this, as soon as I get this, I'll be happy. It will make me happy. No, 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 no. Nothing has power over us. We are the ones who have dominion over our life. So we choose to be happy no matter what's going on and no matter what that thing is. Now, the, the caveat to that is that as we are happy with our lives, good things happen to us. Because happiness sets that law of attraction in motion and we attract more happy things to ourselves. As long as we're saying, I can't be happy because that hasn't happened yet, then we reinforce not being happy and so all of the happy experiences go away and find someone who's happy. <laughs> there are plenty of people hanging out in the world that are happy to take your happiness. They're saying, I am open and receptive to all of the happy circumstances in the world. I am open and receptive to unexpected good, to serendipity, to synchronicity. And so as long as we're going, no, I can't be happy until it looks exactly that way, it's going to go right by our house, right by our life, and someone else will pick it up. And you'll look at them and go, wow, the um, Assembly of God Church across the street had one of their members win the $367 million uh, Powerball or lottery or jackpot or whatever it was 
about a year ago, and that member was a tither. So that church across the street now has baseball fields <laughs> and beautiful gardens, and I'm sure they have a team of people whose only job in the world is to tend those plants because they're immaculate. But I'm looking at that going, I am open and receptive to that good. It came really close. <laughs> so whatever it is inside of me that was not quite as open, I opened out my good. And that includes everyone in this room. Hey, we have a bear. Hey, we got a bear. It walked through their property too. <laughs> So I've worked with this idea of happiness because I spent much of my life chasing happiness. You know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We have a right to the pursuit of happiness, but catching it is up to us. <laughs> and we never really catch happiness so much as we open up to it because there's nothing outside of us that we're gonna get. And, and haven't you done this? As soon as I have that, I'll be happy. And we get it, we have a rush. Oh, it's wonderful for a little while. Then we start looking around. Wow, but this is old news. Maybe as soon as I have that, I'll be happy. As soon as I have that, I'll be happy. So that we are continuing to chase the bigger and better, newest model of whatever it is. Instead of stopping and saying, I am perfect, whole, and complete inside of myself. I choose to be happy now. And when we do that, life unfolds in great and glorious ways of happiness. But this takes some mental discipline because you may not have been taught in your life that you are happy before you get X, Y, Z. You may not have been taught in your life that you start off with happiness and then the things that you collect around you are simply a reflection of the happy state that you are already in. You may not have been taught that when you're in the middle of a circumstance that may feel unhappy, that you have the power to stop and to change that feeling. I think that that's one of the biggest gifts of this teaching is it says you have the power to stop at any moment and change your experience, that life doesn't happen to you, you happen to life. And sometimes when we say, I am committed to being happy, there's a little voice inside of our heads that says, oh yeah, watch this. And then it brings up something that any rational, normal person would be unhappy about. Check bounced, tire went flat. Whatever story it is that we create to give us the rational experience of, of course, I should be unhappy about that. We create that as a way, in my opinion, to really get clear about who we are, about what we're go what's going on in the world, about whether or not we really deserve to be happy. And I think that a lot of this comes back to a self-worth issue. Certainly all of prosperity comes back to a self-worth issue. So if it's perfect health, perfect wealth, or perfect happiness, it's always a self-worth issue. Do you deserve to be happy? just the way things are, exactly as life is at this moment. Do you deserve to be happy or do you have to affect an outward change in the circumstances of your life prior to having that happiness? And I tell you, if you have to affect an outward change in your life before you get to be happy, your times of being happy are gonna be brief. They're gonna be fleeting. They're gonna come and go. But if you can say, I choose to be happy now, no matter what, no matter what those people are doing, I choose to be happy now. No matter what this experience is, I choose to be happy now. I choose to claim the good in it. I choose to focus on that. I choose to take the blessing out of that. Then we get to be happy. We get to have the good and we get to have the blessing. Yay! <laughs> people think we're crazy because we just go around happy all the time. But if you're waiting to get something to be happy, you may be happy for a little while, but it won't last, or you never get to be happy. So our choice is to be happy now, no matter what, or not. 
And I would rather be happy now. I would rather be happy than be right. God, that's a hard one for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all of these talks are always uh, Barbara living out loud. So John was up here last week talking about how there seems to be a ripple in the force with his presidency. <laughs> and there are some people who don't see him as the amazing, wonderful man that I do. And so what I do then is I'm very tempted to put on my warrior stance and to pull out my sword of righteousness and to crack up the little Jesus. <laughs> but then I'm not happy. <laughs> and one thing I've noticed over the last couple of weeks is it'll make me sick. So I don't want to do that. Even if I'm right, I don't want to do that. Even if they are totally wrong, I don't want to do that. Because really, I have to get out of the right and wrong consciousness and just know that everything is perfect. Everything is unfolding exactly as it needs to unfold for the highest and best of all concerned. John's a big boy. He can do what he needs to do in life, and I'm a big girl. And I don't need to protect him or anyone else. What I need to do is stay conscious and be happy. Otherwise, I'm not happy, and I don't like that. I don't like looking around and going, I just wasted a couple of weeks, and I wasn't happy. I don't want to do that. They said to a uh, reporter once asked the Dalai Lama, how can you be happy after the Chinese stole your country? And he said, they already took my country. Why should I give them my happiness? <laughs> so in your memories of people, that you think took something from you or did something to you and that you feel perfectly justified because you're right in being upset with them, where does that get you with your happy life? Where does that get you with today is a happy day? Or do you then miss out on potential happy days until you look around and go, what am I doing? I want a happy life. Everybody in this room wants a happy life. And I guarantee you that a happy life comes from a happy day. And a happy day comes from a happy moment. And that means this moment, not the next moment, not if only things had happened differently in the past, this moment must be happy. So you have to start questioning, what are you doing? What story are you telling yourself about these circumstances that end up with you being unhappy? Is it that there's no way out? Of course there's a way out. Is it that this is terminal? Well, life is not terminal. Life goes on forever. I'm reminded of, of Norman Cousins, who was the editor of the Saturday Evening Post. He was diagnosed with terminal cancer, and they told him he was just going to die. And he said, well, i got to get out of here. <laughs> as far as he could get was the hotel across the street. And he had his, his uh, people bring him. Uh, they, were, they were those reels, those 16 millimeter or whatever reel-to-reel -reel movies of Laurel and Hardy and funny things and he laughed and he remembered that he was not dead yet and that he could laugh and so what that did is that told his body that he was living and sure enough he got better. So what is it that we're telling ourselves that is a good enough excuse we think to give up our happiness? It'll never change. I can never do it. It's impossible. That's ridiculous. If nothing ever changed, we would never have any evolution. If we couldn't do the impossible, none of us would be here. I mean, it's impossible for one of those sperms to find an egg. It's impossible. The, the odds are so against us. And yet here we are. So what is it that the story is that we're telling ourselves about what is going on in our lives that for that fleeting moment of true insanity, we say, okay, I will give up my happiness for this story. Oh, because this is a really good story. And I've practiced it a lot. I've told a lot of people this story, and they all nod and tell me how pitiful I am and how awful it is. And then we all just get depressed. No, that's crazy. So what do we need to do? We need to look at that story and say, is that real? Is that really real? I love changing the idea of I have to to I get to. I have to go to the store. I get to go to the store. 
Have you ever been in another country? A concept like Ingalls doesn't exist. I get to go to the store. I get to go to the mall. Wow. I get to get in my car. I get to go get gas. I get to go to the bank because I have money. I get to go to the store because we have food and I have money. I get to go shopping. I get to do this. I get to cut the grass because I have grass. Isn't that wonderful? And I have a really great riding lawnmower. <laughs> I get to do that, get a little sun. I get to do my exercise. I get to eat this food. I get to clean the house. I get to do that. And look at how it begins to change our focus from, oh, I have to, I have this terrible, I have to do all these things. I have a major to-do list. It's never ending because I'm such a compulsive person. No, I get to do this. I get to have a fantastic life. I get to have the best career ever. I get to be with the best people ever. I get to do this. And all of a sudden, we're happy. We're building happiness inside of us. I've practiced for many, many years the concept that is given forth from the uh, group of non-physical beings named Abraham that speak through Esther Hicks. And that is the concept of do a rampage of appreciation. Pick anything, preferably your spouse, <laughs> and appreciate them. Find something, because if all you ever do is look at someone and tell them what's wrong or inside your own head think about what's wrong with them, your relationship is not long for this world. So practice appreciating them. I do so appreciate the way you do that. I appreciate the way you look. I appreciate the way you smell. I appreciate the way you cook. I appreciate the way you do this. I appreciate you. I appreciate this quality that you have. I really love this about you. See how it starts to ramp up? I really love this about you. And let me tell you why I love this about you. If you're having trouble with a person, go to a thing. Personally, I like chocolate ice cream. Especially on a cold day, on a hot day, I love the coldness of the ice cream. I love the creaminess of it in my mouth. I love the way chocolate tastes. And I love sugar. God isn't the sugar. I know, probably high fructose corn sugar, but God bless it. It's going in my body, and I'm going to bless it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to focus on it. What do I love and why? And over and over and over, I love this center. Those of you who have been to other centers, this is one of the best centers in the world. We have a school, and enrollment is doing great. all of this acreage. We're not just coming in. We're not church in a box where you bring the trucks in and unload everything every day. We've got this place. People can come in and hang out in the sanctuary. They can come in and play the crystal bowls during the week. They can come practice on the piano. I love this center where you can walk in the door. You can get a spiritual mind treatment. You can get someone to talk to you. You can get your head changed in its focus about who you are and what's going on in life to go from feeling like things are stuck to feeling like anything is possible. I love this center. I love you. Because you have the courage to show up and say, I believe I can change my life. And I believe that there is a power and a presence in the universe that will support me and lift me and love me through that change. I believe that I was created for a reason on this planet to have a life that is filled with love and peace and joy and happiness. And I'm going to go get it. Most people in the world are not like that. Most people in the world are crazy. Because they think that the story is more important than the happiness. They think that the being right is more important than the happiness. They think that making somebody else wrong is the most important thing in life. That's not what's going on. Let it all go. And be happy. Open up your heart to that place inside of you which is already happy. I think that's what Jesus meant when he said, except that you become as a little child, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. You gotta be a little child. You gotta have that magic and that wow of life. It's easy to impress a kid. You can, some kids, you can just go, boo. <laughs> and they go, ha, ha, ha. I'm so happy. I'm just so happy. Who 
You've got to find that and let that out. You're not going to find it on the outside and shove it in. You've got to let it out. But then when you do that, and that's where the prosperity comes in, true prosperity includes perfect health, perfect wealth, and perfect happiness. When you do that, your life grows. It grows in all kinds of ways. Your body gets better. You look better. You look younger. You smell better. You got nicer things to put on your body because that's just the way the universe works. When you do that, you have more wealth in your life. You've got more things to, to, to reach out and draw from, whether that's a bank account or whether that's a friend. It doesn't matter. It's all about wealth. And when you do that, you are happier. So you have energy moving through you. We did not come here to suffer through life. We did not come here to struggle. Life is not a test. Life is a gift. We all won the prize. We are spirit made manifest as us now. We are beings of light and we are beings of love. And in my opinion, the purpose of showing up on planet Earth is not to drag everybody down but to lift everyone up. And the best way that I know of to lift everyone up, including ourselves, is to be happy. Today, tomorrow, every minute of our life, every experience that we encounter, the only choice can be perfect happiness. And so it is.